now I made this shit last Pretty dumb to the wake up call to the sun grows tall to the making it count Judgment is what defies us so deep out of the ease of judgment I'm back in the past day of my wife I'm back in the Episode number two of Fusion right here on YouTube, on Twitch, and of course on Facebook as well as we are joining all these wonderful people joining us in the conversation as we were talking on Ring Respect Radio about War Chamber. It's time to switch on over to the MLW side and we are going to be talking about War Game, or sorry, War Chamber, War Games 2003 going a little bit on the rewind as we gear up for the upcoming new season of MLW Fusion. If you're just joining us right now, or if you're having to catch the replay on YouTube, we are the Video Bros. I am Bobby Munson, and that man right beside me there, he's the man with the angelic voice. I'm going to do it one more time. He is Papa Smokes! Yeah, Papa Smokes, it's party time. It's the second half of our double feature here tonight on a Thursday night. We're rocking, we're rolling, we're talking war games. I'm having a blast. Man, I'm excited. War Games 2003 for our friends over at MLW. Initial thoughts, Papa Smokes, before we get into this. Uh, initial thoughts. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to have watched this event. Like I was just saying, I like uh, this uh, retro version of MLW that was in the early 2000s and I, I'm kind of fascinated to watch a bit more. I've only seen a few things online so far and uh, I want to watch more and this was a good opportunity to uh, bite into some of that stuff. And just to set the setting here for you guys, at this point in time, 2003 was uh, closer to the infancy of MLW. They started in 2002. Uh, 2003 was, uh, I believe Steve Carino was the champion, if I'm not mistaken, world heavyweight champion of MLW at the time. Locked in a feud with Mr. Terry Funk, who was in uh, basically the number one contender for the MLW championship. We would find out later during this from commentary that Terry Funk has laid down his challenge and he wants a dog collar match for that championship against Steve Carino coming up. You know, Terry, we never, uh, never shy to go for a bloody uh, gimmick match like that. He's one of the true uh, pioneers of hardcore, whether, uh, whether that's a good thing to be or not. Uh, the Funker did it his own way uh, the whole time and uh, everybody respects him for it. And Suzuki is the boogeyman. <laughs> Mel's got for us right now. Steve Carino is so good. And you know what? One of the it, was he the first MLW champion? If we check that out, Papa Smokes, I, I'm I get a little bit fuzzy on who was who was at the very beginning. I know he if he wasn't first, he must have been second at least. Yeah, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure either. But uh, there was a couple of interesting guys that held that belt back then. That's kind of why I would like to watch some of their uh, events in order, just to to get it clear in my mind. Well, maybe we'll have to uh, as we continue on as Fusion begins to pick up and Thursday nights become focused on the new stuff. Maybe we'll have to do part of our Ring Respect uh, radio uh, reviews as being going back and checking out some of those classic early 2000s MLW matches so we can get a lot more of the knowledge of the history of the company as well, too. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? There we go. That's That makes a lot of sense there, Ed. Shane Douglas, the very first one. Uh, so, yes, again, they have had some very strong champions. And when they go through the list of MLW World Heavyweight Champions, it is a who's who of 
title holders, and it's not been flopped around to a lot of people. Considering the company has been around for 20 years, there's a minimal amount of people have ever had put their hands on that gold. Yeah, yeah, and uh, uh, I've mentioned it before, but one of my favorite ex champions there is Mike Awesome. Uh, what a what a funny guy and a good wrestler and everything. Uh, left us much too soon, but he he was a, a MLW heavyweight champ in the early days. Yeah, we got Do Not coming in with Terry Funk. He's a legend among legends. People underestimate how detrimental he was to wrestling, and he is a he's a hell of an ass kicker. And we're going to see a lot of that in this one here. Uh, first up, as we get going with this thing with the Funkin' Army against the Extreme Horsemen, we start things off with backstage commentator, the voice of MLW. We're talking about Joey Styles, somebody who really can hold down his very own on a microphone by himself. And man, that is one difficult task to be able to call a match on your own and damn it does joey styles do a good job yeah he's a complete pro and isn't it weird that he always works by himself everybody thought it was kind of weird that uh that he was a, a a solo commentator and it's because i think they just didn't have anyone else for him in ecw but uh that maybe that was his shtick is that he always did it alone and he had enough energy for two guys that's for sure he really did. And yeah, I had coming in with saying that uh, Shane Strickland was the first of the rebirth MLW. And uh, yeah, again, uh, we yeah. had the opportunity to see him come back shortly after his release from WWE and do a match with MLW uh, prior to getting signed with AEW. And again, he put on a hell of a match. When Shane Strickland gets going inside that ring, especially the, what I've seen in the MLW side, man, he sure knows how to bring it. So, uh, yeah, very impressive. Uh, but let's get down to business, Papa folks. We first go backstage for the coin flip. This very seldomly do we ever see this when it comes to the war games, the legitimate coin flip taking place. And they showed the coin flip. They had both the captains, Terry Funk, Steve Carino backstage doing the coin flip. And of course, Carino manages to get that win. His team is going to get the advantage inside war games. And he's, he's rubbing salt in the wounds there on good old Terry Funk. Yeah. Carino is awesome in this bit too. And, uh, you know, the referee says, okay, I'm going to flip the coin. Uh, Mr. Funk, would you like to pick, uh, you know, why does he get to pick? I'll pick which side. And, oh, he's the legend. and everything. He ain't a legend. He, he was pretty funny. I, I like Steve Carino. He's a smart ass. Yeah, he played it beautifully, and I loved every second of it. And, yeah, so his team going to be getting the advantage. And uh, what an advantage, too. This one this became very messy at times, Pops, folks, and hard to follow yeah. and stuff, too. Um, so I'm going to lay this down right here. At one point in the night, and I don't know if they ever said this leading up to it, but – as this match became, I think it was, what was it, 4v3? And then they started mentioning that Jerry the King Lawler was scheduled to appear to take place in this matchup, but was not going to be able to make it, making this a 5 versus 3 handicap war games match. And at that point, it was kind of like, what the hell are they talking about? Right, 5 versus 3? Like, this is going to be absolute chaos. The baby faces don't stand a chance in hell. We'll get to that in a moment and uh, exactly how that panned out. But, man, very confusing sometimes when they go past like that. For sure. And, uh, of course, they had a little swerve. Not swerve Strickland, but a, <laughs> a little swerve for us later. But we'll get to that. Uh, one of the things I, I noticed coming out to this was uh, C.W. Anderson was the first guy. And they're kind of making it like he's a relation of Gene and Lars and Arn Anderson and all that. But... Uh, then the first guy out, so you always think in, in when you watch one of these long matches or a Royal Rumble or something, when it's the first couple guys, you're thinking it's uh, somebody with some a good athlete, somebody with some good stamina that's going to hang in there the whole way. The first guy out for the Funkin' Army is the Sandman. And I'm just thinking, man, this match must not be very long because he's smoking and he's drinking beer and he's partying with the fans. My he got God. color before he entered the damn matchup by smashing yeah. his head with that Singapore game that he brings out. Um, and, well, and the beer cans, I'm pretty sure, but he had his back turned to the hard cam as he was doing it, so it was hard to tell which of the one that actually busted him open. But he's pouring beer into the mouth of the fans. Uh, of course, I mean, he's obviously a big fan favorite, especially to the old ECW crowds and stuff like that too. All of them heavily singing Enter Sandman because, of course, MLW not paying for the rights to, you know, get Metallica to use that song on their show. So they're all singing it along while they've got some sort of whatever beat that they, the MLW theme music going on the in the background that was the exact same music that was used for both C.W. Anderson, the enforcer C.W. Anderson, and for uh, 
the Sandman. Yeah, I think the same music was played for everybody. Uh, and then for the last couple guys, they just didn't play anything. So I don't know what was going on here. This I thought this was pretty good, but you can see the difference in production value. Not only that it's 20 years ago from now, but uh, they were starting out. They didn't they didn't have a whole ton of money. So uh, did you like those instant replays too, where it uh, would show the instant replay, but then it would said kind of in cartoon letters like those old Batman TV shows? It would be like instant replay. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of a wild touch, too. I, I was wondering what the hell was going on with that. I was shocked by it, but at the same time, I mean, I had a good chuckle. I mean, of course, coming from the land of older TV where it uh, used to be a common thing to have that, especially in the classic Adam West vein of Batman. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a funny touch. I mean, if it was done nowadays, I'd probably be like, all right, let's let's be a little more serious, but... We're going back a little bit. We can we can be forgiving somewhat. What I can't be forgiven about is this thing not only is a mess, but did every damn person need to bring three or four weapons with them to the ring? First, the Sandman brings the Singapore cane. I think the only one who didn't was C.W. Anderson at this point. And then he hot starts this thing. The second Sandman goes to run in, and he is all up in his business, giving it to – and, man, he – fed him pretty good there was some nice shots especially that elbow that he threw at one point right off the hop there he hit that thing with precision man i i liked that that was a tasty shot right there yeah no the the first few minutes of this were pretty good uh sandman versus anderson and then uh i have in my notes here this is a long five minutes so it, it <laughs> obviously uh, wasn't too fiery for the entire time but it started out good and then once uh steve carino got in there they really took the advantage on the Sandman and started double teaming him. Th this was quite effective and uh, it looked really real. I also thought that um, it looked kind of like one of the old ones from the 80s because I think in those uh, 80s matches, of course, a lot less was choreographed back then anyway because they would have veterans that would call the match on the fly kind of thing. That's clearly what they were doing here and it, it, it has a look that I like that's a little more realistic. Some people would say it's a little more boring because there isn't sequences going on all the time and and uh, and cooperative uh, flips and uh, and and other things. But um, it, it it looks like a battle royal a little bit where guys are just kind of walking around looking for someone to work over. And and I like I like that because it, it it's like the guys have control over what they're doing. So someone's calling a few shots here and there and that's about it yeah more on traditional old school wrestling you're saying the things we love to hear there do not thanks for joining us here tonight too i i don't believe we've had the honor of having you on one of our live shows here tonight so again thank you for joining in tonight we do appreciate you and we appreciate every single one of you who not only spends your thursday nights with us but continue to show the love and support and get the name out of these shows that we're doing here and also to uh you know help people be aware that the video bros are in town uh as you can see at the bottom of your screen too again we have sponsorship now so you can check out our affiliate program through rogue energy uh using that promo code ole pods gets you 10 percent off your order just follow that link below to go place your order with them try some free samples whatever it is you need to do if you're somebody who likes to stay up late and maybe the red bulls the doctor's telling you hey guess what the old blood sugar's up too high the tickers are not handling it very well rogue energy's got the answer for you because they've got uh a nice good vegan type energy drink that hasn't got all the extra added sugars and everything like that there is zero sugar in these energy drinks so go check them out for a natural more natural energy drink that's going to help you with the late night gaming late night streaming and everything of the sort uh getting back to this match up off of smokes uh, i think some of the boys inside this match could have used some of that rogue energy themselves as they were starting to get flattened out by the countless beatings and weapons i mean both the two first two competitors were colored up before we even got a third one in there. Then Carino enters the matchup third uh, with barbed wire on his fist. And then, of course, followed by Terry Funk, who brought everything and the kitchen sink along with him uh, there. So, uh, but yeah, and it's uh, do not say it's been a while, but I'm back again. Hey, you know what? I, I glad that you're back anytime. Really appreciate you spending Thursday nights with us. Love having you out here. I uh, never felt better to go rogue. Yeah, Ferris, that's a great plug, my man. I can't wait to use that one a little bit more often. Can't wait to go rogue. 
Love it. It's got a ring to nice. it. Nice. <laughs> so Terry Funk gets in, and I believe this is the point where they start mentioning about the world title shot and him calling his spot in the dog collar matchup, and he goes right to work getting in there. And, I mean, before long, everybody has got color already in this thing. It's color all over the place. There is not a uh, drop of normal sweat in the house. It's pretty much red dri- red blood drips going all over the place here, Papa Smokes. And then after Terry Funk joins, we got one half of what they said is the – MLW Global Tag Team Champions. I, I don't know for sure, but is this probably what became eventually just the MLW Tag Team Champions at some point, just under this name to start with? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, I would imagine so. So again, Simon Diamond, the fifth competitor in, and then followed by, and this is where we talked about it on Ring Respect, Dr. Death, Steve Williams, joining the fold after that, Bob Smokes. And man, business picked up when good old Dr. Death stepped into that gauge. You're talking about the guy, the, here's the other guy, that didn't have to bring a gimmick or anything with him to this fight. All he brought was those two big thunderous fists into that ring and started slugging guys around like a good old classic war games fight. Oh, and Williams was a damn beast too. And and I know that every promoter wanted him because they figured they could make money with him. Kind of, he wasn't uh, going to set the world on fire with his in-ring wrestling work or anything like that. But the athleticism and the strength of the guy was just off the charts. And, and all the promoters, most notably uh, Jim Crockett, but uh, all the promoters from uh, all around the U S to uh, England, to Japan wanted a piece of Dr. Death. Cause I, I know that, that, some promoter thought if we could ever set this guy loose, like we could have the biggest wrestling star of all time. It's just, he didn't really have the promo. He didn't have the enough charisma to be that guy, but uh, athletically and strength wise, he was just uh, on another level as anybody else for sure. He's a little bit older here. Uh, not as old as funk. Who's got to be almost 60 in this match. If that was 20 years ago, but uh, yeah, that's a good comment right there. That was the, uh, that was the the blueprint for uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, for sure. Yeah, and you know what? And again, if we have Dr. Death to thank, thank for Steve Austin, then again, another great accolade from Dr. Death, Steve Williams, because Steve Austin sure knew how to kick ass and take names, just like Dr. Death did. And did you know that the guy we know is Stone Cold Steve Austin, his real name is Steve Williams. So yep. he wanted to go into wrestling, and the, the promoters were saying, hey, man, there's already a Steve Williams from Texas that has a tough guy gimmick. Okay, well, I'll have to change my name. I'm from Austin. I'll just be Steve Austin, I guess. That's how he got his name. Yeah, that is a clever way of getting a name in the professional wrestling business, but it clicked, it worked, and yes, if we have Dr. Death to thank for all that, Thank you, Dr. Death, not only for the memories inside the professional wrestling wearing, but for also giving us Steve Austin as well to kick ass competitor inside the ring. Um, after Dr. Death, we got PJ Walker, or once known as Just Incredible, joining this thing. I hadn't seen Just Incredible for quite some time here, Papa Smokes. It's, been, it's probably been just about 20 years since I saw something from Just Incredible. Yeah, saw or thought of, I think. But uh, <laughs> again, fair. this is the... Uh, this is the uh, uh, drain from ECW happening here and they're they're getting uh, as many guys as they can with some TV experience and some name value out there uh, MLW a new company they got to get some uh, brand recognition amongst their new fans <laughs> some of the comments coming in are just priceless um, after PJ Walker came in that's when they started mentioning about the messiness of this one Jerry the King Lawler not going to be able to compete, so they kept saying that we're expecting Barry Windham to come out to make this a five-on-three handicap matchup as the uh, match beyond begins. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, War Games is a brutal match as it is. 5v3, there is no good way in hell that there is going to be a possible way for these guys to walk out of this thing. Um, Ed, with uh, (laughs) Portuguese Man of War. Oh, man. Uh, keep them coming, guys. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, uh, this is where they start mentioning it. Jerry Lawler not going to be there. The countdown begins. We're expecting Barry Windham to make this thing a five versus three handicap match as I'm scratching my head going, what the hell do they have planned? All of a sudden, the buzzer goes, and it ain't going to be that way, Pop Smokes. They're having nothing of it, and an absolute shocker as Sabu 
comes out to take part in this thing. And I look, Sabu comes down to the ringside area. He, he wants to climb the damn cage to get on into this thing. As Tim goes through the door, it takes the outside referee to show Sabu where the freaking door is on this place. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a complete surprise, I guess, looking at some of the other guys in this match. I mean, they probably got... Sandman and Sabu on a on a dual rate or something like that. You know, you get the two guys together, or something like that. But uh, at any rate, yeah. Well, Sabu came in on Funk's side, replacing uh, Lawler, and then yeah. the Wyndham was with the uh, the new Horseman. And uh, I'm say what you want about Sabu, it, it was pretty good entrance in this, and he had a nice couple spots. I'm not sure if he, he's a wrestler that I like very much, but uh, when he did that leg drop through the uh, table with the guy there, that that looked pretty good. And God, I just feel it in my back when I see that because uh, uh, you know that Sabu just ruined his body with using that leg drop uh, as his fa- as his finisher. My God, man! But uh, what a warrior! And uh, made a pretty big splash in this match. I got to hand it to him. Oh, not to mention uh, being a accompanied to the ring by Fonzie, uh, Bill Alfonso, the old referee from the ECW too, as his manager. Yeah, and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more about him in just a moment here, Papa Smoke. But Sabu, I mean, I've seen Sabu live. I mean, he's crazy. It's not my style because I mean, I don't want to see you know hardcore matches all the time and it's what he pretty much is most of the time i mean terry funk kind of toes that line himself too but it's you know there is room for those matches every once in a while again as much as i i I love terry funk and stuff i can't watch him as consistently as i can a pure wrestler or anything like that but he does bring a lot of life to things same with sabu and i know he's very well respected and everything like that too um so there's a lot of crazy things he's done i've seen him work for us yeah dad you're right munson cat yeah one half of the bobcats who's always thinking that she can get on screen she thinks she's the next big star right there as jade taking up the screen time right now but uh sabu you know even when i watched him live man this guy throws it all out there i mean from the spots he did i remember watching him in stampede wrestling try to do a spot diving over the top ropes to go through a table that was on the on the ground and uh through his opponent or whatever, and he overshot the damn thing, ends up hitting the barricade where the fans are, gets back up, gets on the barricade, and then goes through the table where his, where it was, yeah. Um, and I can't try to keep up with all this. Uh, so much coming in right now from all our great uh, viewers. Uh, Sabu and his folding chair leg drops were brutal. Yeah, you bet they were. Um, but yeah, business definitely picked up here. And again, they were now saying this could be a five on four handicap matchup. So we're expecting Barry Windham to come out next uh, to make this thing a five on four. And that's exactly what happened. It became a five on four with Barry Windham coming out next. And I'm like, okay, so this is a. This is a handicap match. And just as they were about to say, the match beyond begins. That's when we come back to Bill Alfonso, who said, gets on a microphone and goes, five out of five on four. This doesn't seem fair. Well, and he bets himself in harm's way to get inside this matchup, making it a five on five. I don't know if this was a smart move by any means. Bill Alfonso, Alfonso should probably not be getting in there because, again, he could easily be the guy getting the shit kicked out of him and end up giving up for his team. I started to fear that this was going to go the way of the, the heels and which is against the grain when it comes to war games matchups. Yeah. I also did like we were saying about there's, there's quite often a, uh, a manager involved there who might eat the pinfall sort of thing. And once Fonzie got in there, I thought, Oh, great, here we go. But um, I, I, he's got to have that spirit, right? If he comes out with one of the guys uh, as a manager kind of thing and uh, they're outnumbered, man, you got to jump in there and help help out the boys. And uh, I was just going to say, too, do you remember Fonzie's biggest moment in ECW when he had the match against Beulah McGillicuddy and uh, he got his juice or whatever and he got so bloody, like he must have cut one of those arteries in his forehead and the blood was just, oh my God, man. Like he had to stay in the hospital for like almost a week after that. He lost so much blood. 
Yeah. Well, if a bicep is hanging, it won't go uh, far. So wrestle on, brother. Yeah. You know, yeah. We've heard all those stories again. We've even heard them on a personal level with him doing something similar at a show in Saskatoon one year, uh, where he also had to cut the, put the bicep out a little bit. And he just, he taped that shit back up and he got in there and he fought his next match. Sabu is one crazy MF or I can, I can guarantee you that. Well, and you remember who his uncle was two months and the sheik, Eddie yeah. Farhat from Detroit, who taught him everything about the business, taught him never to break kayfabe, taught him every, everything that he knows and uh, used to tag team with him. We'll be having a more in-depth discussion on this topic uh, at some point in the future here, but uh, uh, I, I respect the sheik for his wrestling pedigree as well. I mean, the, the guy that he learned from is, is one of the all-time greats for sure. Yeah, you bet. And again, yeah, you'll be able to hear more about the Sheik and all sorts of Sheiks when we talk uh, Sheik wrestling here on Ring Respect Radio in the not too distant future. Uh, so that's going to be coming at you very, very soon. But uh, yeah, back to this whole thing. The match beyond begins. We're at 5v5 now, finally. And at this point, it's absolute chaos in there, Bob Spokes. We've had every single weapon you could possibly think of inside that matchup. Uh, and God, it's it's bloody. People are knocked out. We got Carino and Funk just giving it to each other inside there. And then the spot of all spots ends up happening. The pretty much bring this one straight to an end there. Um, we're talking what you know what happened to Steve Carino from Terry Funk as he's in there. And I I can't remember who he had the submission on, Bob Smokes. Uh, Car Carino had a submission on somebody, and just as he does. Funk comes in with that flaming cattle prod and he brands the back of Steve Carino. And as Carino walks towards the ropes and he's holding his back, he turns around and Terry Funk blows the flame inside the face of Steve Carino, which inevitably leads to Terry Funk putting a submission on and Carino saying enough is enough. We're done. It is over. And the Funk and army ends up winning this matchup. Yeah, nicely done fireball. I thought he's probably done it a million times since yeah. the 70s. Uh, don't forget, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bill After's a beauty. Um, yeah. But don't forget that Funk used to be a scientific wrestler in his early years back when he was NWA champion, but and he never became the madman until, uh, you know, halfway through his career type thing. But yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the brand, that had already been a thing. Um, the, the fireball in the face. And then, uh, yeah, not just any submission hold, but the famous funk spinning toe hold. Nice to see it again. This doesn't get the pop nowadays that it, that it would have uh, in the old days, but um, it's a it's an agonizing hold and uh, just applied to mastery by, by the funks. And... Uh, there's no, nothing for Carino to do but uh, tap out at that point. Uh, he had had the face burned. Now he's getting his knee joint wrapped around his other hip and everything. Yeah, you got to just tap out. And big win for the Funkin' Army. Yeah, and giving him momentum to Terry Funk as he would be going to challenge uh, Steve Carino at a upcoming event for the MLW World Heavyweight Championship in that dog collar matchup again i'm hoping that that's somewhere on there so we can have an opportunity to check that one out as well too we got perish i see saskatchewan in the comments so i gotta check is that toe hold more dangerous than jericho's saskatchewan spinning nerve hold <laughs> saying dangerous and jericho has a saskatchewan spinning nerve hold i i i don't think i was aware of jericho's saskatchewan spinning nerve hold and how you know at the same time how dare Chris Jericho make any claim to Saskatchewan? I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he's from your neck of the woods there, Pop folks. a good old Winnipeg. Yeah, he's from St. James in Winnipeg. You got to be tough to make it out of there. <laughs> right there, Basser69 just tossed his Levi Knight shirt into the walk for Saturday <laughs> night. Good, man. Good. Hell yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait till you're down there. I'm sure Levi Knight will appreciate the uh, the love and support as well, too. A lot of people don't realize how technical Funk used to be for most of his career. It's kind of the opposite of the Bushwhackers. No one realizes they were death. Yeah, again, that's something we've talked about on Ring Respect Retro before is about the uh, – the uh, New Zealand street herders who Papa Smokes uh, so gracefully introduced me to probably two of the most violent bastards I've ever watched in professional wrestling history, man. And uh, 
it's on his list of a thousand four. Oh man, that was a long damn list. I don't know if I ever paid attention to all those holds, but a Saskatchewan spinning nerve hold was on the list. Okay, well, I, I okay back then I'll give it to him. If Chris Jericho was trying to pass that off as something nowadays, I have discredited it immediately. But Jericho of the the nineties era, I, I'll give the credit to. He can use a Saskatchewan uh, spinning nerve hold. Then um, I've told you this years ago. <laughs> Yeah. So, I, 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 arm bar. <laughs> there we go. We're getting, we're getting a lot of comments coming on in here from everybody, and we're glad we do as we bring this uh, episode of Fusion to an end. But overall, Pop of Smokes, I'm not going to be too critical of this. This going back to 2003, I knew kind of what we were getting into, especially with the competitors in this one, and I knew the general feel of how MLW was going at the time and everything like that. Overall, I mean, if you're looking for an over the top violent war games matchup then this is an over-the-top violent war games matchup if you want your spots you want your color you want your guys who are going to give you a pop it had all of it it definitely had all of that and then some so again i'm not going to criticize i had a good time watching it i thought it was a lot of fun yeah me too and and this kind of a matchup five on five or kind of thing inside a cage, a gimmick match and everything, it's going to be a little bit messy. I made the comparison of it looking a little bit like a battle royal where you kind of have to look from one side of the ring to the other side of the ring to see what's going on or if someone's just choking in the corner, we'll see what somebody else is doing. And uh, it's one of those kind of matches and the guys are strolling around, picking a little fight with whoever doesn't have a dance partner at that exact moment, and uh, they're calling it in the ring. That That's the way it was done, and that's the way a match like this is done. You don't have a bunch of uh, Will Ospreay uh, choreographed dance moves and flipping each other's feet around and boosting each other up so they can do somersaults and stuff like that. It's not that kind of match whatsoever, and you're not going to see that. It's just tough dudes calling violent spots and making it happen in the cage. Yeah, and that's exactly what we got. So definitely uh, everyone will have to check that out. We got Ryan, Bob, see you in the morning. Yeah, I definitely will. It's going to be an early one. Bob, I'll see you uh, the lot outside the hall on Saturday. Great yeah. show, guys. Thanks, Basser. Ryan, my man, thanks for joining thanks, in. Man. Spend the time here with us tonight. And definitely uh, we'll both see you on Saturday. But in the meantime, uh, I will definitely see you tomorrow morning as we uh, – continue our path over at uh, our shoot jobs there um but we've got uh do not coming in here uh you know for all the war games matches i have watched over the years even though they were slightly different nxt incarnations were very fun to watch and again you know you know i think a lot of that just has to come down to triple h himself we know that he grew up a fan of the old classic professional wrestling he understands not only the old style stuff but he understands what works from there to bring over to a new flavor. And I think that's why people have gravitated towards those NXT war game matches so well, because he knew how to do it. He knew how to put it together. He knew how to put people that people wanted to see inside those structures take place inside of them. Um, again, I think that that's going to be much the same with bringing it to the Survivor Series fold as well, too, as we're tried by Bing at the end of the night, joining us for a little conversation over there. Um, but yeah, we got Parrish with Ole, Ole Parrish. Thank you for joining us as well, too, tonight. Uh, but yeah, I think Triple H gets it. And I think that's why I think the War Games match, in terms of being on the show, is going to be it's going to be good. I, I'm pretty excited about it. I think Triple H gets it. I like his booking style. I think as far as modern bookers go, Triple H is definitely one that, that's up there. I think overall, I mean, obviously, big fans of Court Bauer. We really think that he does an excellent job with everything over in... Uh, over in uh, everything, <laughs> no, that's that's called the smokes cat in the background, man. As a see, look, proof, proof. This one ain't saying nothing right now, she's being annoyed, <laughs> yeah. Uh, problem, nonetheless, I mean, <laughs> your cat's way younger than mine, two months, and they sound different, I'm sure. She's got a few less years on her than good old Bing does, there. I think she's. But, oh, yeah, she's just about 11 years old at this point, too. And the other one, he's 10 going on 11. Uh, but, yeah, the uh, years quickly add up uh, for the good old uh, good old cats or uh, a.k.a. pussies, as uh, Chris Parrish likes to so say in the comments. Section. Scandalous. Scandalous, I know. How dare we say such things here on, on our, our fusion show? I mean, we might 
there might be children watching this late at night, Pops. How dare we? How dare we? But that uh, definitely is going to bring us to a close. It's wonderful that everybody was able to join us here, uh, both for the doubleheader of Ring Respect Radio and for Fusion. Again, if you were tuning in on YouTube after the fact, you might find these both divided up. And uh, yeah, that's uh, if you're doing so, you'll notice that you can go back and watch the Ring Respect Radio. I uh, do not say nice to meet you, Papa Smoke. So again, uh, you're being uh, met for the first time, and I have to figure out who Do Not is because I'm scratching my head going, who the hell are you? But I'm sure you're going to let me know here soon enough so I can quit being so confused. And I am not, how dare you? I am a Pisces. <laughs> oh, damn it. We're just having too much fun as we continue to enjoy our double features here on Thursday night. Uh, Pop of Smokes, I'm sure that uh, we're going to do our best to try to get that rescheduled uh, night with Lance and Hawaii coming up. And we got Mel. Kitty isn't meowing. It's Ole. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Bing singing Ole in the background. <laughs> I, I like that. That's a good one. It's, oh, damn it. Oh, my God. Uh, how are you? I, now I know who it is. My man, my man, my brother. It's been way too goddamn long. I am so glad that you were able to join us here. Uh, it's been, it's been, yeah, just a long damn time. And now that I know it's you, thank you. Thank you. It's great to have you out here. Um <laughs> Meow is cat for Ole. The cats get it. They sure do. And speaking of which, you can, you look at that low. Look at that. Like, that sponsorship. You can use Ole. It's uh, it's it's uh, Ole Pods for ten percent off of your order over at Rogue Energy. Absolutely, my friend. Uh, we you know we got to chat soon, my man. We got to get uh, get back together, go for a drink or something like that. It'd be a great time. Uh, but yeah, and uh, also sometime uh, feel free to come down and check out a PPW show where you can catch myself, and Papa Smokes. Uh, come on down and have a good time on a Saturday night with Prairie Pro Wrestling. Uh, but yeah, Papa Smokes, it brings us to an end. We got to let people get back to their lives, go and you know have a sleep, have another beer, whatever it is they're doing for the rest of their Thursday night. But hey, before we do, everybody, as always, Papa Smokes, let the people know where they can reach out to you, where they can find you, where they can send you some of those awesome classic wrestling matches that you so adore. All right, I'm on Twitter, also known as Elon Musk's Free Speech Funland, at Smokes underscore Papa, and I'm on Twitch at Papa underscore Smokes underscore. Yes, you can catch him all over the place. He is the big man all over the big boy playgrounds. And right down below is where you can find myself, as well as you can find me this Sunday, joining my brunch buster brother, Chris Parrish, as we bring you the very latest edition of Busted Out, where we're talking all about this week in professional wrestling. Uh, again, like I said, it's unfortunate Lance Anawai wasn't able to be here today, but we wish him a speedy, healthy recovery from his illness and hope that that voice is all ready to go so he can have a party time coming up maybe next week or coming up on one of these weeks so he could join us right here but we've got some other massive interviews lined up as well too lance atawai a big one i got some more lined up here pop folks that are going to get revealed very very soon we're very excited about we got those locked in place and they're going to be happening uh coming up here uh in a few weeks even because again as the new season begins to unfold that's when everybody wants to get in on all the action here on the Video Bros Network. So definitely stay tuned for many big names out of MLW joining us right here on this very Thursday night show known as Fusion. So that for myself and for that man right there beside me, the man with the angelic voice, right now you can go and wait till Saturday and catch us at Prairie Pro Wrestling and also every Saturday on Prairie Pro Wrestling's YouTube as the ones calling the shots inside the ring. Until then, we love you. Stay tuned for next Thursday. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Judgment is what defies us, so give out the three so judgment. I'm back in your box.